I guess as a junior, it used to be, we used to have fish and chips always on like a Friday night or a Saturday night. And I played school footy on a Saturday morning, so it was always the way it kind of worked. And obviously juniors, real juniors, was playing on a Sunday morning, so we had fish and chips on a Saturday night. It's just something we did. Um, and I guess playing senior footy, Jay started, then obviously Cam, then myself. It was just something that's always kind of carried on. And it's probably my one meal a week that I really lash out as such, keep myself ready and uh, also just relax for a game of footy that's coming the next day. Love you. That's cool. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good night. Okay. If mum and dad aren't in town and my sisters aren't able to make it, I know someone else normally comes. It's, it's normally at least six or seven of us sitting around the table having dinner. Last weekend before the Geelong game, there was close to 20 of us sitting around having dinner, so... Thanks, buddy. Come on. Come, Brucey. There were seven of us to start with. There's six nieces and nephews. Two are remarried, so the family's growing. But um, we all try to get together for pretty much these nights. So we all try to get it once a week and have dinner um, as much as we can. We're a very unique family and we're very close. And definitely not a day that goes by. I don't get a text from mum or dad um, with some random response or random question they want to know or ask. Um, but I guess that's why I don't know we're, we're so close because we know ins and outs of uh, one another so much. We're a pretty close family, and um, you know I probably talk to Travis nearly every day. Well, it doesn't matter what happens in, in life. Uh, your family will always be there for you, sort of thing. And uh, yeah, that's one thing I sort of tried to um, to push with all my kids. Yeah, they've been very supportive. Obviously, through footy, you have your ups and downs, on field and off field. But um, I guess they've always been there. That no matter if you have a good game, they're always there to support you. And they're always push you harder. They never to let you get, I know, carried away with yourself, get a big head. They're always bring you down. And I guess that's probably the main reason I love them so much. He's always worked worked hard on keeping himself, keeping his body body well, doing the right things by it. He's been able to play nearly all, all games all the time. Um, that he has missed too many through injuries. And then when he has had a bit of an injury, you know, he works hard on getting it right. In what, 10 years I've been playing, I've missed seven games of football. Uh, I think i played six or seven in the VFL, so it's not too bad. And all dreams do come true, you know. Maybe this is one of his dreams that he wanted and I'm so happy that it's come true for him. Hopefully he can get to 300. I know, the closer it's come, it's become more of a real, realism that hit 200. It's been a long time coming. Um, I grew up always wanting to play AFL football to hit 200. You hear Dad played 333 games and the wear and tear on his body obviously was massive for him. But um, I know to be sitting here playing 200 games is uh, yeah, pretty special. I moved out of home three years ago um, just for convenience. I was travelling an hour most days into training and obviously an hour home. It's my home, this is where I come to relax and when people come here they understand that and respect it but you normally get me in a very relaxed manner when you get me at home, that's for sure. It's kind of just a little bit of I don't know, motivation as such but it's a cool just little feature in the house too to break it up and show a bit of personality. The C for the cloak, then it's obviously also the infinity symbol which I've got tattooed on the body, we'll go for a bit of a wander around the place. I guess this is where all the business happens, uh, which is not too much study. A few awards I've picked up along the way. I know my Copeland's in there. My probably the most honoured one, tool, tool of the Week. There's two of them in there, which is cool. Uh, I've got my grand final medallion. Uh, we'll wander through. Yep. So yeah, a bit of a games boys room. I like to have a bit of fun. Um, pretty much in summer, I've got a fair working out in here. Obviously the pool table, music, TV. Got me new pride and joy over here, the bike. Uh, it's probably tucked away for the winter, but it's still pretty cool. And this is where we probably spend most nights uh, when the boys come round, um, the cinema set up, so it's cool. A little bit of funky theatre uh, carpet. And you can't really go to the movies without having lollies, so I've got my own little candy bars set up around the place. Um, can't half tell, I like Chopper Chops, so with a big barrel M tucked away. So it's my little games room. Obviously opens up outside to the pool and a bit of outdoor entertaining, but the weather's not really nice to go out at the moment. And the pool's a little bit green. The pool man was here the other day, but something wrong with that. So we'll get that fixed, that's for sure. All right, and this is the best means of transport, I guess. All right, so upstairs, um, this is my bedroom, um, I guess, my the master bedroom. And sit up here, watch a bit of TV, chuck the fire on, sit on the couch. Um, but yeah, this is kind of, most of my place as such, but it's been cool being here just over 12 months and to move out of the city and I guess be an adult now. I've been out of home for three years now. It's time to grow up and start looking after myself. And I've got me two little two little kids and such, Bella and Bruce will be downstairs running the mark and 
Cam's my third child, I guess, my older brother, but uh, he lives with us, so happy, the four of us are pretty happy little couple, I guess you could say, yeah. Yeah, Friday, um, I know, kind of eve of the 200, so looking forward to playing Richmond tonight at the G. Just about to leave home. It's obviously raining pretty miserably outside, it has been for the last three or four days, so it's not looking great, but um, obviously just looking forward to the occasion. It'll be a great game, and uh, hopefully we'll come away with the win, because if we lose on a night like tonight, it's going to be pretty disappointing and uh, pretty upset afterwards, that's for sure. Travis, you know, he'll approach it uh, exactly the same as he would have his first game or his 50th game or whatever. Um, you know, that's the way he goes about his football. Yeah, just cruising on, on, on pretty low key, a bit of music in the car. Uh, obviously, have me water, Red Bull, Gatorade in the car with us, um, just to on a top up on the way through. But pretty much once I get there, is our game face. Between now and then, it's pretty much still pretty low key. Just uh, enjoy, drive safely. Obviously, it's pretty wet today, so um, get there in one piece and go from there. Um, just arriving at the G almost now, um, just on Clarendon Street, play a 15 minute cruise. Tonight weather's held off not too bad, which is nice, but doesn't look too good what's coming, so probably going to rain again soon and hopefully knock off Richmond because a bit of rivalry between the two and obviously within the family as well, Dad playing there, so it'd be nice to get one up on them uh, early on in the season, that's for sure. Cheers, buddy. Thanks a lot. Thank Thank you. Enjoy your evening. Well, do. Have a good night. I'm scared how he's going to play tonight. Oh, truly. I know you'll be fine. I'm scared after all the crap this week. How are you going to play? You worry more than anyone, so... Yeah, but you're going to come out like a bull. I know that much. I would say Travis has always been a mediator. Always wants the best out of everybody. If somebody's unhappy, he always tries to, you know, turn it around. It's the same with the football. If they're having a bad time, he tries to turn it around. But sometimes in himself, I think, you've got to try and turn it around for yourself too. You always get a period of time where you get to struggle a bit. If people believe you're still having a go, and they can accept that sort of thing. And that's one of the things I've tried to instill, especially into this sport, that you know, if you keep working at it, they'll come around the other way for you. We talked about it being wet all week. Um, if it was going to be dry, it was going to be a bonus. So uh, we're set for a wet weather game of footy against Richmond, and uh, none of our game plans have changed. And personally, my things don't change too much. Travis Cloak playing his 200th game tonight. It's been a long journey, famous family. Football is nothing new to them at the highest level. Williams on the overlap. Goes with the right boot and puts a throw. White's going to kick his second. Oh boy, oh boy. You want to bury yourself quickly out there if you're a defender. And Pendlebury kicks his third. There you are. Three to the captain. And he should get the three votes. Friday night football at Collingwood in their second game of the season. Finished two and two after four games, not too bad. Um, obviously, the last quarter pretty disappointing. On all, we didn't play great, but uh, it's nice still to come away with four points. You know, hopefully it was a matter of time because I, was, I, was, I think I was running out of time. So, um, you know, I have you know a massive belief in my own ability and knowing that eventually it would turn for me. Um, every game I've played, I've, uh, I think I've got a lot more run in my legs and I've got a lot more confidence in my body and pretty happy and looking forward to build on that and you know having another pretty good consistent year. Personally, it wasn't um, one I'd like to remember, uh, but I guess that's football. Um, but um, yeah, it was interesting. It's good. Jesse really stood up, played really well, played his best game for the club so far. Um, Jamie Elliott obviously kicked a few goals again once again and at midfield really tuned in with some goals tonight. So it's fantastic um, to see that way. And we're not just relying or having one or two goal kickers each week kicking four or five. It's uh, really spread out between the whole team. So it's nice to see that. And uh, obviously the back line stood up once again. So they weren't great conditions for key forwards. Um, it was hard to mark. 
the ball was on the ground a bit. Um, but um, he gave us a contest. He, would, he and we would have liked him to have um, marked a few more. But um, you know, I can see that he's working hard and um, he's, he's getting himself into wrestles at the moment where he needs to get the defender off him. And when Trav's at his best, he, he creates separation with his strength and then he launches at the ball and marks it at highest point. So, um, you know, it, look, it's been discussed, his form. Um, He's working hard. Uh, he's not in the best of form as we'd like him to be, marking form. But you know, he's got some things that are going against him. We haven't been kicking the ball real well to him either. So um, it's a work in progress. It's early in the season. He's got plenty of time to turn him around. Yeah, it's. Uh, I guess for the next four or five days for me, lead up to the next game is um, going to be really knuckled down. I've got to analyse my game, look at the the things I'm really doing wrong because obviously uh, it's not working for me at the moment. Not much is going right. So. Back to hard work, back to I know, putting extra Ks on the track, uh, extra sessions of my own, really tipping into Bill, our fitness advisor, and seeing what I need to do, and obviously chatting to Bucks and Skinny, and um, yeah, I'm obviously not happy that personally the way things are going, so um, I don't really got to step up the mark and do something about it. What did you want to be when you grew up? When I was growing up, I wanted to be a fireman. Do you have a girlfriend? Uh, yes. What is your favourite animal? What's my favourite animal? I quite like, I saw the peregrine falcons actually the other day. I don't mind them, but um, I'd have to go with the monkey. What are you scared of? I'm scared of ghosts. How much money do you make? Not enough. <laughs> what is your middle name? Luke. Are you I'm taller, taller than, than a giraffe? giraffe? No, not quite. Welcome everybody here today. It's uh, This is just a wonderful ceremonial moment for not only the Collingwood Football Club, but the City of Melbourne. Collingwood is extremely proud to be part of this Melbourne Olympic Park, and we have no doubt the new community facilities will add an extra dimension to this extraordinary precinct. Collingwood is committed, committed to playing a major role in the community, just as we've done since 1892. The first club to let the sustenance workers in for free, to build our stands with unemployed labour at the time, to provide soup kitchens. That is the reason for this football club. We love playing the game of football, we love winning, we want to win the Premiership, but we are here to be a beacon in the community. That is what we're all about. The new community complex will overlook the Olympic Park Oval, as you've seen. There will be a three-lane running track, will provide exclusive access to the Westpac Training Centre Elite Training Facilities and the netball court. We're going to link up to the tan track and the Yarra bike trails. We will have a community gymnasium, a health and wellness centre, New secure managed public locker rooms and showers. Change rooms for amateur sports clubs and other teams. Multi-purpose function and event and conference rooms. A 150 seat presentation theatre. Secure amenities and gymnasium facilities for women. Rarely do you get an opportunity in life, as everybody has here, to transform our city, to leave a mark. I hope that when you drive past in 30 years time, you're telling your grandkids, that you were part of building this fantastic facility. I love the Tennis Centre, I love the Amy Stadium, but a lot of that was built with government money. What Collingwood have done is said, we'll take this onto our shoulders, we will be a partner in this precinct, we'll do it the Collingwood way, but that is also the Melbourne way, and that's what I love about this. It's a club that has never forgotten its community roots and whether it's working with the most vulnerable or the homeless or bringing the community into the Westpac Centre or connecting the Westpac Centre across our river, this is just a magnificent development and I'm very proud to be a very small part of launching it with the sod turning today. I'm absolutely delighted. This is one of the most uh, 
uh, significant and happy days for me in the time I've been president of the Collingwood Football Club. This is the dream starting to come to fruition now. All roads lead to Collingwood. That's what it's all about. The reality is most of the other facilities here have been majority provided by government. Here it has been a real partnership, certainly between government, but with the Collingwood Football Club saying we'll shoulder our share. You know, as a private club, we will take this on and be a part of this centre. And I think that's all the more admirable. Yes, well, as the Lord Mayor said, it's a rarity in life that somebody actually pays their way. And we're putting in a fair bit of money. Look, there'll be no change out of 25 million, maybe even a little bit more. The federal government were fantastic in coming with $10 million. There's still a lot of money. You can do the maths on that. That's at least $15 million that Collingwood is tipping in. Yes, for its members, but for the greater community. And we believe that. At Collingwood, we say, if you don't stand for something, you stand for nothing. This will be an iconic piece of architecture right in the middle of the city and it's all black and white. Today we're going to um, just go through um, the week in media and some of it relating to, to Collingwood and then if we get time I want to get a little bit of hosting as well. Just a little bit of see how you go with it in front of the camera looking down the barrel. Primarily uh, the purpose of the program is to uh, educate the players around the workings of the media industry. So that's, that's there's a mix of uh, practical in that, um, understanding what print require, what radio require, what television require, what they're looking for, so they can be prepared and, and more comfortable with the various mediums. We were talking about last week when Pendles came in, had a scan and all that sort of thing, that that, that would become part of the story at the start of the week. But notice the way you walked in? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He didn't have his hoodie pulled over his head. He didn't look like a criminal trying to evade them. He, said, he smiled and said hi. It's, it's about trying to embrace the media as, a, as an integral part of the game and allowing them to represent themselves as well as they possibly can and uh, doing themselves and, and ourselves proud. Appreciate your time. Good luck. We'll check to you soon. Thanks, mate. Thanks. Josh Thomas from the Meat Parks. Again, just emphasising those points that when you... I don't know, it depends on the question, but when you had a bit of a laugh and... Just the expressiveness straight away. You, you feel it feels good to listen to that sort of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You know, even you guys in you know, yeah. sort of added a little chuckle. So yeah. having that line of silence is really good. Just being able to express as much personality as you can. Over the course of the last 12 months, we've put probably a dozen players through, and we've put, and then put some other coaches through it as well. Uh, it's it's generally been uh, we did. Scotty Pendlebury last year, for instance, so to the very senior, uh, and Trav Cloak did it last year, um, to younger players, not first year or generally not second year players, players who are starting to blend into the team and more is being asked of them off the field. Welcome Magpie fans to this week's edition of the club. Ahead on the show we speak to Jamie Elliott. Oh yeah, what are we doing? <laughs> Uh, tonight we've got a great episode for you. We're going to uh, catch up with my lookalike, Jamie Elliott, um, and learn a little bit about his footy story. Uh, after that, we speak to... The... <sighs> I'm not cut out for this. I'm not cut out for hosting. I think it's the biggest game outside the grand final. Definitely bigger than the finals. It's just an honour we get to play on that day. The last post, I think it just puts tingles through the spine. And it's just before you run out and um, you're running out there with your mates and yeah, it's, it's just, it's an amazing build up and it's a great day. Yeah, the 2006 Anzac Day, I remember playing on the wing. I forget who my opponents were, but I think there was a few of them that day. <laughs> yeah, I think we won by, well, I'm not too sure, 14 points. I remember feeding Bucks all day. I think he kicked a few goals. Yeah, it was a great day. Oh, when they called out the medal winner, they said Craig Johnson. I, I just assumed it was me, so I, I walked up there and collected the medal. Craig Johnson from Collingwood. Oh, there was a few jokes going on after that, as you'd imagine. Yeah, I was called Craig for a little while, but it didn't last too long. Mum and Dad um, framed it with the jumper. Mum and Dad seemed to steal all, all my stuff, so 
if you go to their house, I'm sure it will be up somewhere. And I think that's one game I'll, I'll always get to because it is such a big day, not just for the Collin Footy Club, but for all Australians. So, yeah, definitely, definitely get there. Attend this year's Anzac Day lunch held in conjunction with the Collingwood Pass Players Association on Wednesday in the lead up to the blockbuster match and hear from 2006 Anzac Day medalist Ben Johnson, Corporal Mark Donaldson VC and legendary Essendon coach Kevin Sheedy as we celebrate the tradition of Anzac Day. Call 1300 Magpie to find out more. Well, it's the first day uh, on the launch, I suppose, of the Peter Dacos uh, Junior Academy program here at Collingwood. So we, we've had a lot of the, uh, the, the sons of uh, former players in, which has been great, uh, and, and they've been put through their uh, paces through V-Squad, uh, through uh, Scotty Lucas. Look, uh, V-Squad is uh, a football academy program of which I'm part of, and as a result of the work we've done with some junior footballers, Collingwood approached us looking to start the Peter Dacos Football Academy in order to engage with the past players and their sons. And in order to do that, we wanted to put together a football program that's not only enjoyable for them, but also develops their game of football. So potential father-sons down the track, can be further advanced than they otherwise would be, but also come and see the club that their fathers have played for and have some fun. We've had a school session, they've, uh, they've gone over the weights. We didn't do too many weights, but they've gone through uh, what it takes to sort of impart that as part of their training route for football and how important that is. And then they, uh, we got them in the cold bars, the cotton cold bars. So it was, uh, it, it's been a fantastic day. The club's identified um, about 19 boys and um, that we're going to be working with and it's quite exciting really and uh, if today's any indication, uh, it was just terrific to be here with good young people and uh, they were just so keen to improve. Uh, just great drills, good facilities, good to you know see what real AFL players train with, it, uh, with and just good techniques learned and lots of drills, yeah. I learnt to um, just recovery wise, go in the pools and cold and hot, icing, um, stretching after, yeah, training and games. They're, they're the sons of very talented footballers so hence there's a decent level of skill but you can see the ones that have got a footy in their hand all the time and working on it. I want to play like my dad because he kicks the ball well, marks it well. Um, but I just don't want to play him fullback because I don't like fullback. I play Scott Pendlebury because sometimes I'm in the midfield, so yeah, I like to watch him, to learn a few tips off him. Who knows, in two or three years' time, they might be, uh, might be wearing the black and white. I love being a member of the Magpie Army. Because I'm part of one of the biggest sporting clubs in the world. I love sharing my dream. With over a million others that bleed black and white like me. And it's in my blood. This jumper makes me feel 10 feet tall. A packed MCG every week. Collingwood domination, envy of the nation.